Joining me now, as I mentioned, to celebrate the first day of the fall 2024 semester, the president of San Juan College, Dr. Tony Hopper Pendergrass is here with me in the studio. Dr. Pendergrass, it's always great to have you here. Thanks for being here. Oh, of course. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Happy first day of oh, the fall semester. It's a great day. Yeah, very good. And so there's a lot of things, again, that you share with the college community at our convocation, which happened last week, that I always think is interesting to share with the greater, larger community, because we get so much support from the community, and they get to see kind of how San Juan College is doing, and some of the data that you and a lot of other folks are tracking to see how students are succeeding when they come here to San Juan College. Absolutely. It's our entire strategic plan and it involves everyone at the college. Very true. And so let's get started by talking a little bit about uh, some of the things in your in your presentation. I have to start off with this gorgeous photo because I think the entrance uh, to the college now is so stunning. It's a uh, it's a great improvement, I think, and a, and a nice way to welcome people to the campus. Yes. And I've received a lot of positive comments from our community members regarding our new entrance. Very good. Very good. And our roundabout and things like that. So yes. A lot more signage around campus as well. So it all all is part of a bigger plan, I know. So it looks, Yes, it's in our master plan. Yeah, it looks very nice. So um, we'll start out with the dual credit uh, um, headcount and full-time equivalent. And so that's trending back up. Yes, so that's part of our first strategic direction at the college that the Board of Trustees has approved. And that has to do with partnerships. And it's very important that we have strong relationships with our K-12 partners. And prior to the pandemic, um, we had over 2,000 dual credit students that could take courses at San Juan College um, in high school. And that counts for both their high school credit and college credit simultaneously free of charge. And we had over 2,000 students prior to the pandemic that dipped a little bit, but we're pleased that we had a 7.5% increase this last year and um, from spring to spring. And we're almost right at the 2,000 mark again. So we're recovering well and um, we're thrilled about our partnerships that we have with all of the school districts within our county. That's great. And for parents who are listening or, or others, I mean, to be able to get college credit for free is a pretty good deal. Yes. And the school districts buy the books for the students. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity. And they've proven over time, and this has been the case for years and years, that students who take dual credit have a much higher graduation rate from high school and college graduation rate. So nice. I would encourage your students to consider dual credit. Right, very true. And again, a nice cooperative um, agreements with all the school districts to offer that and to yes. get the students here. So that's, that's a great thing. Um, one of the other things is some other courses that I wanted to ask you about. And these are some of the things that are offered at, uh, at San Juan College as well. These light the fire courses. Yes, so at San Juan College, we have over 140 different certificates and degrees that students can choose from, but we break that down into seven pathways. So what our deans and faculty members did this last year is look at the courses that students typically take in their first couple semesters and which ones are we going to really invigorate and consider light your fire or introduce wow factors that will really intrigue them where they can learn more about a career or a pathway. So they selected several that they are developing as light your fire courses. Got you. And these are designed, I guess, so when a student takes it, they're kind of hooked or, or excited about the rest of the program, I suppose. Yes, absolutely, with guest speakers that work in those careers um, and other engaging activities. Got you. And those seven pathways, again, as we look at the graphic, arts, communication, and humanities, business and entrepreneurship, computer science, IT, and cybersecurity, education, social services, and public safety, energy, manufacturing, and transportation, health sciences, science, math, and engineering. It really covers most, if not all, the gamuts, I would say. Yes, it covers all of our certificates and degree programs. Right. Very, very good. Um, a Career Pathways Expo, again, that go along with those um, seven areas and inviting eighth graders to campus. Yes, so we had nearly 1,700, actually 600 or 1,662 eighth graders. So we bring all the eighth graders in our county to our main campus to explore a couple of pathways. We have an assessment called Career Coach, where students can 
high school or these are actually middle school students, eighth graders right. that take a career coach and it's either a six question or 60 question assessment and it tells them what careers that they might be interested in or which pathway, how much they make, where the jobs are and um, they explore a couple of those pathways throughout the day and our employer partners um, visit or they show up at our main campus and assist with this event so students can actually talk to several companies that are located in our community nice. and from throughout the state we actually had individuals come from Santa Fe and other places to to, to help us right and you had 40 employers here for that for that yes, event. we did. So nice. And I guess, and for students, is it for students who maybe don't know what they'd like to do, they can take that assessment to get a better idea, or is it for all students? We'd like for all students to take the assessment because it, it will take less than five minutes, and then it just gives them a sense of what areas they might be interested in pursuing. Okay. And I suppose for some, it may be something they never even thought of before. Exactly. Based on some of their mm -hmm. interests already. So, mm -hmm. got and it. it's located on our website. So it's just called Career Coach on our homepage, and it looks like a target that they can just click on. Oh, okay. They can do it already then. Mm -hmm. Got Free it. of charge. Got it. Okay. Very good. Um, some other employer recruiting events that were held on campus and some big names um, on the list that I'm sure folks would recognize. P uh, companies like uh, Intel and Chevron and BP and BPX and Los Alamos National Labs. So those are pretty heavy hitters, I would say. Yes, we have a multitude of employers that come to our campus and recruit our students and for very lucrative positions. And that's an important part of the student success, I would say, that it's not just handing out a certificate or a, or a graduate or a degree, but making sure that they can get a job with those things, those credentials. Yes, and some of those employers are offering six-figure starting salaries. Okay. I'll take that under advisement, Dr. <laughs> Pendergrass, but <laughs> thank you for sharing that. But that's got to be great for a student who's making an investment for a couple of years to come here and get her certificate and maybe get a, a six-figure job offer. That's not yes, too shabby. it's impressive. Yeah, very much so. Very good. Um, mock interviews as well. That's another thing that the county, or excuse me, that the college um, offers for students. And so that's another thing that we want to talk a little bit about, some mock interview uh, programs for students to get them prepared. Yes, and this is hosted by our Career Services Department, Jill and Tanda in that area, but we just want to make sure that our students do well in their interviews and we help them as much as possible. So they schedule either individual mock interviews and then several of our programs throughout the college also host interview sessions with the students so they make sure they are prepared and are comfortable in the interview setting. Nice, and that's another free service, I think, too. Absolutely. That the students mm -hmm. are get to take advantage of. Yes. So wonderful. Very good. Um, next, we're looking at uh, some degree seeking students who attend to transfer some of those rates um, from San Juan College and those rates are increasing. Yes. And so um, our transfer center has two people located within it. And over the past three years, their growth rate has been almost 40% increase. So our students transfer um, in, to various institutions um, throughout the state and to other states. One big partner is Fort Lewis College, just north of us. But um, we want to help every student be successful and transfer and not have any issues with their credits when they do transfer. That's important. Right. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. And this is not a typo, I don't think. It is a 475% increase. Yes. <laughs> How Since about fall that? 2020. That's a lot. Yes. of kids. So congratulations <laughs> no. to everyone who's involved with that because no. that's an impressive statistic. We have a great team. Right. National Signing Day. This happens in the spring. Um, a chance when high school seniors are approached and they are, they are committing themselves to coming here to San Juan College in the fall. Yes. And this is similar to what they do in sports when they have the National Signing Day in sports. But we also do it for all of our career and um, technical students as well and we are thrilled that we had 123 students sign that day committing to San Juan College and one added bonus of the day is the US Assistant Secretary of Education actually contacted me and asked if she could also attend our signing day so she gave a nice keynote speech and it was great to have her 
is an added benefit to that day. How about that? Yeah. Congratulations. And I think for the students that show up uh, that are that are here and that can come, I, I think they're pretty impressed by the hoopla and the commitment from the college to help them get signed up and, and prepared for their fall adventure here the fall semester. Yes, we try and make it a fun event that they will not forget. Very good. Well, and that's every spring. So we'll look forward yes. to that again coming up in, in 2025. There are some new programs being offered from San Juan College. And again, this is another one of the things that I think makes community colleges just so um, so important because they're able to kind of offer these new programs to meet the needs of, of their communities. They're not having to wait or study or they can kind of put these things together fairly quickly. Yes. So um Thanks to the state of New Mexico, we requested some funding to support the start of these new programs. So for our heavy equipment operations program, which is an 11-week program, we received 775000 from the state of New Mexico. And thanks to our wonderful support from M&R Trucking and Mesa Land and Gravel, we were able to start this program. Um, the School of Energy and our um, Alicia Corbell, the Dean, and the Transportation Director, Rory Truby, worked very hard on this business plan. But the program started a couple of weeks ago with the first cohort, and we already have 68 people on the waiting list. Wow. So um, generally, the, the students, after 11 weeks, will start out at a minimum of about 65,000 with overtime it's much more than that but um, we've already had companies calling us asking um, wanting to hire the graduates very cool it's got to be like every eight-year-old kid's dream to be able to learn how to operate these heavy trucks and, and front loaders and things like that oh I think there's lots of adults that want to learn that as well I think you're right mm -hmm. I think well that's why you have a waiting list so <laughs> that's true um, an NSA uh, cybersecurity um, program as well yes so we've had a cybersecurity program for several years at the college but we requested funding for cybersecurity for infrastructure and this is basically to support um, utility companies or energy companies with cybersecurity since we have a long history of kind of excelling in the energy space um, we were asked to start this program and um, I know that our business school worked really closely with Dr. Lorenzo Reyes, Dr. Um, Mr. Murdoch Maloney and Dr. Cameron Cooper but we were able also for our cybersecurity programs, both of them, we are now a Center for Information Assurance, which is a national security NSA designation from the U.S. Um, government. So this is a huge designation that will lead to a lot more funding um, that will come to San Juan College to support our cybersecurity efforts. But nice. it's another great program that, you know, nationally cybersecurity pretty much has a zero percent unemployment rate. I would think so. So if you have, you know, credentials in cybersecurity, you will have multiple job offers. And it's, you know, sometimes it's even a location neutral position. I was just going to ask you about that. I would think that's mm -hmm. a job you could almost do anywhere. Right. So that's mm -hmm. that's good to know. Um, other programs that we're seeing on the on the screen, uh, substitute teacher program with the Aztec School District, another mm -hmm. cooperative effort, a next level training academy for entrepreneurs, financial planning for small business owners, and accounting for non-accountants. For small business owners yes so those are some of the new programs we just rolled out this last year very good all right excellent uh, experiential learning again part of the strategic direction number number two and talking about the increases there yes and this is a major thrust of our five-year strategic plan is more than just educating students we want to make sure they're placed in good family sustaining jobs when they finish so we need to make sure that they have some type of work experience whether that's apprenticeships internships or um, service learning experiences and this last year we had 476 students that participated in these opportunities we actually have a grant at the college um, that will pay for these internships for individuals in our community and so if you know if you own a company or work at a company and you would like interns um, this grant will pay them fifteen dollars an hour so this is a great way for students to gain real-world experiences and for employers to have more staffing 
Very to good. help with their efforts. And so if there's an employer listening to us right now, they can contact the college to get involved in this program and maybe yes. have some students place with them? I would recommend they call um, Jill Bishop or Tanda McComb in our Career Services Center. So they can just call the main um, number at the college and request the Career Center and they will help them. There you go. Very good. And and, the, and those folks will get paid. The business doesn't have to pay them. It's covered by the college. By yes, this grant they're paid through the college through a grant. Nice. Very good. And um, these are some of the companies that are already working with the college on this, these types of things? Yes. Got you. Lots of companies that we would recognize, of course, from the city of Farmington to Chick-fil-A to uh, Elder's Greenhouse and, and many, many more. Yes. So there's a lot on the, on the screen. If you're listening to us on the radio, you're missing out. You should be watching us on YouTube mm -hmm. or Facebook so you can see the, uh, the visuals that go along with our conversation this morning. Um, next, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the strategic direction number four, and it's increasing um, the Hispanic student population. That's an important goal of San Juan College as well. Yes, so we're proud that we're a ma majority minority serving institution. 32% um, of our students are Native American, so we're a Native, Amer Native American serving non-tribal institution, and that brings millions of dollars to the college to support our students. We would also like to obtain the Hispanic serving designation, which is 25% of our students. Right now we're at 21% of our students are Hispanic and we would like to reach that threshold of 25% during the strategic plan so we will also be eligible for more funding to support our students. Got you. And already there's a lot of things on campus that support Hispanic students too, right? Yes, this would just we have be a increasing wonderful director, um, Audely Carlo, who does a wonderful job um, with several staff members um, hosting um, Dia de los Niños and other events throughout the years, year to support our Hispanic and Latino students. Right, and we're seeing some of those photos on the screen right now about some yes. of those events that are happening, which are open to everybody on campus, but specifically yes. that particular student population. Yes. And so, wonderful. Well, we're close. We are close. We're close. So we'll see how things go. Increasing retention rate for first-time, full-time students. And again, um, there's a lot of first-time students who come to San Juan College. And that's an important, I think, um, badge that the college wears to be able to help these students, maybe the first in their families, to come to college. Yes. And, and the, at the college, our strategic plan, we have several performance indicators that we monitor and try and improve year after year. And um, fall to fall retention for our first time full time students is one of those what we call leading indicators that will lead to higher graduation rates. So we want to make sure that if students start in the fall, they come back the following fall. And we're pleased to report that um, we were among, for a couple years, the best community colleges in, an, in the nation. We had similar fall to fall retention rates. And um, we're hopeful that this fall will be another banner year for the college where, where, where we will have those high rates again. But it's something that we closely track. We want to, if students start at San Juan College, we want them to finish. And we want to provide all the wraparound supports that we possibly can to make sure that that happens and that they cross the finish line and we celebrate them at graduation. Right. And we can see on the screen, again, it's been as high as 69%. It's down to about 62%, but still um, certainly higher than average and, and higher than 50%, of course. Right. And right now, at, at this moment, we're tracking about 65. I'd like to see it at at least 70. I'd like sure. to have the highest ever, but we're doing well right now. We This is a dashboard that we track live. Right. And I would imagine for students, though, there's a lot of things maybe that could interrupt their college plans that really the college can't control. We can help. But mm -hmm. for some students that are struggling or have other external demands or what have you, there's a lot of things that happen and their best laid plans kind of go awry. And that's usually the case. It's, you know, it's something like they need um, additional child care or, or they need or they have to stay home to take care of a, a family member. Right. Or th their job won't let them have certain hours or whatever. So we try and work with them to see if we can resolve those issues so that they can proceed. Got it. Very good. And that's what the numbers show. Mm -hmm. So, very good. Got it. Um, some other um, items that I wanted to ask you a little bit about today, Dr. Pendergrass, including some equity, diversity, and inclusion programs here at San Juan College, talking about new faculty and new hires. Yes. So, 
this is an important initiative at the college. It's, it's important that students that are in classes, they see role models as faculty members that, that look like them. And so um, what we've done is really try and work with the deans and the faculty to make sure that we hire the best. And um, a lot of our full-time faculty member um, come from our adjunct rates. So our, what an adjunct is, is a part-time faculty member. And they may not teach five classes a semester, but they may teach one or two from us. So we really try and encourage our adjunct faculty that have been with the college for a long period of time to consider applying for these full-time opportunities because they're usually from our community, they care about our community, and they care about our students. Right. And so this last year, four of our faculty were hired from the adjunct rates, adjunct ranks, excuse me. Right. And we hired a total of six um, faculty that were have diverse backgrounds out of 11. Nice. And the idea, again, is to kind of show students who are diverse that uh, there are faculty, their teachers are, are with backgrounds similar to theirs. Ex absolutely. Right. Very good role models, I guess I would say. So yes. there you are. Um, other facilities goals that we are seeing, we talked a little bit about, of course, the new entrance to San Juan College, and that, of course, includes some of the other signage, and outdoor lighting and things like that. There is some work on the physical plant building. The, the building was demolished, and there'll be a new physical plant building constructed, I think, sometime maybe in the next 12 months or so. Exactly. It's kind of the idea. Um, the pump track. Um, which a lot of folks may not recognize is part of San Juan College at the corner there of 30th Street and College Boulevard. It's a cooperative effort with the, the city and some other groups, I think. Yes, FAST. Yes, thank you. Which is a biking group here in our community. and It is always busy when I drive by oh, there. Oh, I know. I've noticed that as well. It is always busy. It's And people of all ages are there. And it's, we were told that it would attract people from you know, for miles and miles, um, because right. it's, there's not one near us. I think the closest one is maybe Bernalillo. I think you're right, but yeah. And and it is it's a very high end pump track, and anyone that likes to ride their bike should go try it out. Right. Or I saw kids on their scooters too. Yes, scooters. Which, um, more, more power to them. That's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. And there's some bathrooms coming to there as well as I understand. Yes, we wrote an additional grant, and that we were able to. Um, that was successful that we'll put in some nice bathrooms in that location as well and we plan to continue to add picnic tables outdoor shade those types of things over the years nice that's a nice addition to the the city and the college's outdoor recreation amenities basically yes it's been a huge initiative by the county and the city and we want to support those very good the other um some of the other goals that are on the list here the retractable bleachers are installed now over at the hhpc and that was a long time coming i think you and i talked about that mm -hmm. maybe in the spring that that was part of the original blueprints i think for the gym mm -hmm. and just funding caused that not to get included but now they are yes and so. they're very nice they're purple and they'll allow for like um you can bring the retractable bleachers down for championships Right. either in pickleball or basketball or whatever. Sure. So that'll be a great addition over there. Um, some new theater um, additions at the uh, Henderson Fine Arts Center and, of course, the Connie Gotch Theater. Uh, boiler replacement, which isn't too um, sexy, but it's one of the things you need to do to maintain your, your infrastructure on campus. So, mm -hmm. And when it gets cold, I think we'll appreciate new boilers. We will. Yeah, so <laughs> there's that. South Campus Classroom Project. Again, that's a design project. And then there's a remodel at the Harvest Food Hub, uh, which is another San Juan College um, entity, which is near downtown. Yes, and it's a partnership with the city of Farmington. They own the building, but we're adding commercial kitchen equipment. So um, the individuals in our community, such as our local farmers, are able to um, bring their um, produce or meat or whatever to the storefront at the Harvest Food Hub. And then they also have industrial food storage and then the commercial kitchen now so they can create um, their produce or meat or whatever they have into value-added products. Got you. And sell those, I guess, from the yes. hub as well. So mm -hmm. so Scott's Five Alarm Chili could, uh, who knows? Yes. Find a market. Absolutely. Okay. Not me, some other Scott, but not me. But, <laughs> but that's a great resource as well. Some other resource development grants, just talking about kind of the amount of, of grants that are awarded to, uh, to San Juan College in the millions of dollars. Yes, yeah, so um, Dr. Lorenzo Reyes and his team um, 
Jody Bitta and um, Devana Coolidge do an amazing job working with everyone at the college to write and submit grants. So this last year, um, they were able to be awarded um, for the college $9.8 million. year before it was $12.8 million. But um, this is just additional resources to support the college and our community. Very good. And it goes to almost every corner of the campus, I would say, in different programs and support. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a lot of money coming Even in. Even KSJE, That's right? true. You're right about that. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. <laughs> Very true. Um, new student basic needs intake survey. I thought this was really interesting that you shared it at, at Convocation about, and we talked about some of those students that maybe have plans to come back to school in the fall, but sometimes those plans get interrupted or, or what some of their other challenges are. And I thought this was really interesting to learn about our students. Yes, and this is something that Dr. Boomer Appleman, our Vice President of Student Services, and his team implemented. But it's basically when students come in to to apply and register, they have a conversation with them. And they basically ask seven questions. It's not a it's just a conversation, but they gain some really valuable information. So um when the last time they implemented this, which was this last fall or mm-hmm. spring, I, I think it's a yearly um count, right. but one out of three are experiencing housing insecurity. So 33% of our students are homeless or transient. One out of three do not have reliable home technology, so they don't have internet access at home or a personal computer. One out of five do not have reliable utilities. So 20% of our students do not have reliable water, electricity, or sewer. Um, one out of eight do not have reliable transportation. And then one out of ten are experiencing food insecurity. And historically, we know that the food insecurity is underreported be- because people do not want to admit that they're hungry. So, one thing we've instituted um, thank you to our s- wonderful San Juan College Foundation and our generous donors in our community. Um, we have food all over campus just sitting out because we don't want students to have that stigma of having to ask for food. So we just set food or out, ramen or other, we, um, lots of fresh pr- produce. We just let them, it's just a grab and go, mm-hmm. no questions asked. Right. And that's been great. And I think I've seen folks that have, you know, replenished the food from time to time because it does get grabbed and gone. And again, uh, this is all part of it. But but this data, I think, really tells a lot about the students that the college is serving and what they are dealing with to just get to class. Right. Absolutely. And uh, and again, I think it's important to uh, to know that and to help them uh, where we can. And there's many things that we do to do that. Yeah. One of the things that we do is we have several hundred laptops and if students need them they just contact our student resource center and we provide that we check them out a laptop or we also have hot spots where they can check out a hot spot so that they can have internet access so we try and do everything we can um, that's why we built housing right and let's talk about that because okay. again housing um, this semester it is full you were telling me the students moved in last Friday Yes. And there's a waiting list for housing. Yes, there's already um, 50 to 60 students on the waiting list for housing. Um, We have 150 beds um, in our housing, and we are full. Wow. Congratulations. I know that was a goal, obviously, to have it full, and you want it to be full. Um, And so it, it shows, and I think... That was kind of what the study showed, that if you build it, they will come, for lack of a better phrase. Um, but there was a need in the, in the community. I know the college studied that for a long time. Yes, we did. And they actually recommended a 300-bed facility. But to stay on the conservative side, we thought we would start with 150 beds. But it is also, it's, you know, it's showing right now that the feasibility study was probably accurate, and we need to consider expanding. I've heard a rumor of a phase two. Yes, in a document somewhere. we're certainly looking at that possibility. Gotcha, understood. Um, but this screen kind of talks a little bit about some of the students that are in the housing um, and how they, um, you know, kind of what they share too with, with the college, right? And, and learning a bit about them. Yes, our, our housing director, David DeVilliers, um, surveyed our students and asked them, um, 
And we learned that one out of three do not return home during our breaks. So for example, the holiday break in December. Um, so we provided several students that stayed during the break with the foundation provided them each with $150 gift cards, a meal gift card mm -hmm. that they could use um, for meals during the two week break. And um, some of the reasons we asked students why aren't they returning home during breaks, they told us they, ha they might have transportation struggles, home life difficulties, or food insecurity. So we just want to make sure our students have the resources they need. Right, right, which is great. Again, another important part of coming to San Juan College, and, and it's more than just taking a class. No, we, we try and wrap our arms around them and make sure that they're, be, that they're successful and they have all the resources they need. Right, and I think, again, there's another uh, slide that talks a little bit about some more services for the students, the Student Health Center, which is currently um, ahead of schedule on construction, I think you told us. And so yes. um, there's a temporary Student Health Center that's already open serving students, but there's gonna be a new permanent one open um, sometime maybe early next year. Yes. So we opened the, the health center in a temporary location, um, which is in our, what we used to call our cultural center. That's right. But that's where the health center is located. That opened the beginning of September last year. And we have a nurse practitioner, and we also have mental health counselors because we want to co-locate these um, services so that there is not a stigma attached to mental health. Um, they can just tell their friends they're going to the health center that's and it right if they have a whatever type of appointment they have but um we were able to work with our students and and the federal the our federal delegation congressional delegation provided us with 1.1 million in funding and then our state legislative local legislative delegation provided us with another 1.1 to build this and it's actually located it's kind of a bump out right um, as that will be part of the Health and Human Performance Center. And our students um, agreed to assess a fee to themselves um, to, to partially pay for these services. Right. Not fully pay, but partially pay. And it's a, I can't remember if it's a 20 or $25 um, fee each semester, which is basically less than a copay. Right. Once a semester to be able to use our health center for for both their physical and mental health needs. And those services will be free to those students. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if you live on campus or a commuter student or whatever. It, no. it, they're accessible by, to the health center. Yes, and thanks to our um, local legislative delegation as well. We also have a virtual um, telehealth service for all students throughout the college as well. It doesn't matter if they're just taking one class or if they're taking a full load. They can access um, virtual counselors for their mental health needs 24-7. Nice. Very good. Well, that's really important too. So yeah. again, uh, just an example of these wraparound services that you talk about, um, mm -hmm. we all talk about for our students who are, who are here at San Juan College. Um, another topic that I know you and I talked about extensively in the spring was reaccreditation. We were in the thick of it um, during reaccreditation and the report is in and of course San Juan College has been reaccredited uh, to no one's surprise I don't think but I know you never you never want to take it for granted either. A lot of hard work by a lot of people to uh, to get there. Yes so this happens every 10 years um, for our regional reaccreditation and this is from the Higher Learning Commission and we had 19 different criteria that we were um, evaluated upon and we met all 19 criteria. Congratulations. And it was a huge gargantuan effort and I was so pleased by all of the college employees that showed up for these meetings and we even had community members attend and it was a very successful effort and I'm grateful to everyone that took part. It was a full campus effort, all hands on deck. Yes, our accreditation visitors had never seen that level of participation ever. Let me read the quote that's on this report for our radio audience too. They say the infrastructure and resources provided to instructors and students to support effective teaching and learning are second to none at San Juan College. Yes, I should have 
read that at convocation. <laughs> now that you point it out to me, Scott. Well, it's a great <laughs> thing that we're, we'll put it on the radio, and so hopefully it gets to everybody any, anyway. Um, and then it talks about that they, they said that the college was the most engaged and enthusiastic institution they had reviewed, which I think is another important um, feather in the cap of Samuel College. So yes. congratulations. I know um, that was something that you were very working very hard on with your team. And again, it was an all hands on deck situation. So yes, there were hundreds of people working on this. And now we're good for 10 years. We're good. Okay. Good to know. A financial award again, uh, the Finance Officers Association Excellence in Financial Reporting. That's an important distinction, I think. Yes, that's something also to be very proud of. There's just a handful of entities in the state that have received this award, and we've received it nine years in, in a row, and it's from the Go Government Finance, Finance Officers Association, but it's for excellence in financial reporting. So we owe a lot of gratitude to um, all of the individuals that work within these departments to make sure that we are accountable and we are good stewards of our funding. Very good. Another award from the New Mexico Hospital Association to the college's nursing program. Yes. Yeah, so um, thanks. To, um, San Juan Regional Medical Center um, nominated us for this state award for our n excellent nursing um, program, and we're thrilled um, to receive this award and, and grateful to the wonderful support support that we received from San Juan Regional Medical Center. They were a great partner, aren't they, with the nursing oh, program? Oh, tremendous partner. Yeah, very For much. all of our health sciences. Nice, very good. Um, a couple other uh, rankings uh, from some national uh, publications, I would say. Again, uh, this first one talks about uh, San Juan College and how we rank nationally against other community colleges. Yes, yeah, so, so Niche is a um, website that anyone can go to and it provides rankings of public schools and of colleges and universities. And um, they have different criteria for ranking and um, they ranked us as the number one community college in the state of New Mexico. And then nationally, out of 922 colleges, they ranked us as 38th on this website. So we're pleased and grateful. Right. Nice to see that. And again, we don't always see us ranked nationally, so it's mm -hmm. kind of nice to, to see where we, where we rank. Exactly. Compared to those 922 other uh, institutions. And then um, Wallet Hub, I think, is a website that maybe folks would recognize, and they did another ranking of San Juan College. Yes, Wallet Hub is a website that helps individuals improve their credit scores. And um, for the last two years, um, we've been aware that we're also ranked well on this um, website. So for the, the entire state of New Mexico as a system, this report came out last week, but um, we were ranked as the, um, num the second highest um, community college system in the, in the nation. And then as far as San Juan College, we're ranked as 15 in the nation out of all community colleges and then for cost and financing we're ranked seventh in the nation in the nation nice so we well, are low cost right well and i think folks who are familiar with san juan college already already know that or should so mm -hmm. that's an important thing um some key, uh, kpis key performance indicators i wanted to share that um about some of our our students and and how they're doing and so this is something i know that the college is working towards some of these goals yes and so um we have several key performance indicators that we monitor and as i mentioned earlier the um a lot of them are leading indicators that lead to lead to higher graduation and transfer rates and in seven of our um, performance indicators on this slide, um, we increased um, year over year. Mm -hmm. So like, it's more likely that a student will graduate if they finish English or math within their first year, and it's even higher if they finish both. So we really track that and try and make sure that students, we reduce barriers and that they are able to finish both English and math, because then they're really likely to graduate so those are some of the measures and then we also have what's called momentum points and the momentum points are um, if they take certain um, if they successfully pa pass certain levels of, of classes so like three credit hours nine credit hours 15 credit hours so we track that as well 
Got it. And then on this, the strategic planning key performance indicators, we look at, you know, how many of them graduate and are placed in um, jobs. And that's one thing I really wanted to point out on this um, slide. Last year, 83% of our students either graduated, were continuing their education, or are um, enrolled, transferred, or enrolled in the military. That was 83%. This year, it's 89%. So that shows that we're trying to offer and have a good mix of programs here at the college where they will get a job. Right. And they got a plan once they, once they leave here. Yes. That's important as, as well. Um, some other um, quick graphs. We're just about out of time, but I wanted to kind of share some of these things as well. This is the graduation transfer rate by race and ethnicity, and that's another important thing to track, I think, as well, to see how our minority students are doing. Yes, we want all students to be successful here and not have any gaps. So I'm proud that our graduation and transfer rate is the highest ever here at San Juan College um, for our first time full-time students. And that is at 41%. And then our um, Native American students actually had the highest graduation and transfer rate out of all of our populations at 45%. How about that? Congratulations. Yeah. That's a great thing to show. And then this screen I always like to share because um, I think it's so interesting about kind of these um, different uh, trends, this graduate challenge. And the idea was to increase um, graduation rates by 5% every year and overachiever. <laughs> look what we did. Yeah. Our Thanks to all of our employees at the college, we've um, increased it actually 7.6 percent every year since 2010, and this last year we had the highest amount of graduates ever at 1,754. Right, and if you'd stuck with that 5 percent every year, it'd be about 1,360. So that's kind of shows you just how above the goal the college is. Yes, at the moment. So again, congratulations, and I know. It's you and a, and a large team of other folks who are working towards all this. So it's nice to see it, though, isn't it? It's every employee at the college. Right. Very, very true. Well, Dr. Pendergrass, that is our our slides today. But I really appreciate you taking the time to come and visit with me and, and share this with the community. I think it's really important for the community to know um, how the college is doing when they decide to send their kids here or grandkids here or nieces or nephews or a kid down the street. They know what they are doing and how they're succeeding. Thank you, Scott. It's my pleasure, and we're happy to help every student. Very good. Great to have you here. Thank you again. Oh, have a great you. semester. You too. Dr. Tony Opper-Pendergrass, the president of San Juan College, my guest this morning on KSJE.